Welcome to another episode of FTV Infinity Evolved Skyblock with Arturio Ameris. So today, there's a couple of interesting things that I want to talk about. I have started down the uh, Pam's Harvest Craft and AgriCraft route. Um, and this takes a really long time to do. Um, there's, I, I couldn't even count how many Pam's Harvest Craft seeds there are. There's a lot of them, and um, I'm going to try to improve them all to 10, 10, 10. And most of this is going to happen off camera. It's just the, the interesting parts I'm, I'm going to at least highlight a little bit. Um, so the sprinkler system helps a lot. If you, if you want to do agri-craft, or even if you want to just do some crops, um, I would suggest building one of these and it's not too terribly difficult to do the um, the sprinklers are pretty easy it just takes a little bit of iron the the buckets are somewhat a pain to make but by this point you should know how to make the buckets you'll have to make irrigation channels which are these things here again these are super super simple um, and then you'll need to make the tank which is that right there. Again, very simple, just take some wood. And the way this works is you have to have an irrigation channel and then your sprinkler has to be connected underneath your irrigation channel and then your tank connects to that. Now these transfer pipes, you can transfer water through them. Excuse me. And where that's coming from is I've got uh, an infinite water source here with a liquid transfer node. Um, it does have to have a world interaction upgrade, so this is somewhat expensive, but it does work. Each one of these is gonna take three diamonds. So, and then just transfer pipes feeding it, and um, it pretty much stays full of water. And each sprinkler has a range of seven by seven, so if you center it over your water source block that's um, irrigating your farmland, you should be fine. Okay, so um, just, you know, I may have shown this before. The idea is you come over here and the things that are unidentified, you throw in the chest like that. Now this one's probably, yeah, that one's a 10, 10, 10. So that's, I'm going to keep that. These two are not 10, 10, 10, but they're close. So I throw those in the void to get rid of them. I put my, my products over here and then I get out what I produced. Now the trick is how to set these up so that they're, they don't get in each other's way. And the next thing I'm going to do is I've already got some yellow that are 10, 10, 10. Um, those are not, because those are, I'm saving for Batania. Um, but all the rest of these are 10, 10, 10. So the crossbreeding thing. I'm going to crossbreed poppies with dandelions. And so you look at poppy seeds and you look at the uses for poppy seeds. And if you're crossbreeding dandelion and poppy, you'll get blue orchid seeds as the product when they crossbreed. And you can do this on farmland or homeless. So this is going to take a while, um, but it's actually going to go relatively quickly because of the sprinklers. Unidentified, unidentified. We'll put my 10, 10, 10 seeds. My 10, 10, 10 seeds back. Oh, those are not 10, 10, 10. And neither are these. But we'll get there. We will get there. It'll just, it's just going to take a while. Ok, 
Okay, so those ones are 8, 10, 10. And then these ones are 7, 10, 10. And the leftover ones, again, I'm going to throw to the void. And having a bed will help this a little bit because they, I believe they grow a little faster during daylight. Um, you can get these plants to grow underground and stuff, but I, I think they grow faster in daylight. So the big thing is just kind of waiting for them to be mature and see. And then um, putting the double crop sticks in so that they'll um, try to improve. But it's relatively a quick process, you know, if, if, uh, if you've got sprinklers. So what's happening over here is this is where there's a lot of stuff that you crossbreed with sugar. Like once I get a 10, 10, 10 bean seed, I'll put that here and then it'll crossbreed with the sugar and produce a coffee bean there. But uh, my bean seeds are not quite 10, 10, 10 yet. These are the bean seeds. They're close, but they're not 10, 10, 10 yet. Okay, so um, I think I sh I'm pretty sure I showed this in a previous video, uh, how I made this. And someone suggested on the, um, the forum for um, Skyblock, Skyblock Infinity that I use a block breaker from Project Red along with a, um, a redstone clock from Project Red. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll give that a try. I, I put, put it here and then put the, the clock here. And um, when if you're standing here and you put the block breaker here, it's gonna be facing up. So the first thing it did was once I put the clock down is it activated and it broke my barrel and sprayed cobblestone everywhere. I'm like, ah, eh, crap, okay. So cleaned all of that up and dug down here a little bit and so that I was in a little pit and kind of looking up and placed the block breaker so that it was now pointed at the block here, put the clock, back it broke that block and what happened this water source block turned the lava into obsidian um, fixed all this went back this is working it's producing lava you know it's providing the lava for my smeltery so that's perfectly fine um, but I do want to try the block breaker thing so I came down here and I started this setup and so I figured out how to make it work. Like this is this is the Project Red um, block breaker. And so it doesn't work the way the transfer node works. I mean, it, it does physically break the block, whereas the transfer node doesn't. And that's why you can get away with putting the water block here with the transfer node is because the cobblestone never disappears, so the water never gets a chance to destroy your lava source block. So this, I, yeah, if now that I know how to do this, it is easier to make the block breaker um, compared to the, the other stuff. Um, there are three block breakers, but they're all, you know, relatively difficult. I mean, I don't know, know why anyone would ever make a Mine Factory Reloaded one in this pack. Um, that one's pretty easy, but I, I'm assuming you have to trigger it with a redstone signal. Um, and again, it takes a diamond pick. Whereas this one just takes an iron pick, so... It's, you do have to make a, a piston, but that's not, not a huge difficulty. So what I've done is I've set it up here with a barrel. It's getting the, the cobblestone pumped into the barrel. The transfer node is pulling it out. Um, transfer nodes are a little expensive for redstone, but if you don't have to put a world interaction upgrade in them, they're not bad. So then I've got a liquid transfer node here, and it's feeding this stone barrel with lava there's a water source block on top of it, so it's producing obsidian for me. Now what these other two are going to be for is um, I'm going to have barrels underneath them that are automatically pulling, but I'm going to have barrels on top of them that are automatically feeding too. And what's going to get fed into them is one will get redstone once I get to the point where I have surplus of redstone, the other one will get glowstone. And that'll produce netherrack and endstone for me. Uh, that's a trick that I did in Galactic Science. And as long as you can produce lava quickly, it, it works very, very well. But the problem here is that we don't have awesomeite. 
The best we have is lava, and while lava is a two times melting speed, um, actually, no, it's not. It's only a one time melting speed. Huh, okay. It, okay, it's just going to produce these things very slowly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make more of these crucibles, and I'm going to put more lava source blocks here, and there'll be a liquid uh, transfer node on each crucible over here, and it'll all feed lava down, and hopefully more quickly it will feed um, these items. Now it's possible that this will never work quickly enough that it'll fill the other two. That by the time it fills up the first one and uh, the water will almost instantly turn it to obsidian and pull it out, that it, the system will constantly be filling this one with lava and these two will never ever get enough lava to truly be effective. That That is a possibility. And if that happens, I'll have to come up with an alternate method to do this. So over here, um, I've got the blast furnace and I've got the coke oven. And, and this is this may be a problem is that I've, I've got a, an abundance of creosote. And other than making treated sticks and planks, there really isn't a use for it. Um, but I do need the coal coke for making steel in the blast furnace. Um, and unfortunately, you cannot put charcoal in there. It has to be coal. Um, do I have any spare? I've got some. Let me put this in here. Because there's a lot of stuff that needs steel. Um, and I believe I discovered that Batania, you can't throw iron in the um, mana pool to get mana steel. You have to throw steel in, which... You know, this is a slow way to make steel, so I may have to look at alternate methods to do this. There are there are other blast furnaces here. There's, um, well, I guess this is what I actually made. Yeah, that these all give the same thing. Um, that's interesting. They're different colors, but they're. They're all called blast. Okay, this is blast furnace brick. Oh, okay, I see what the difference is. These, these take hardened clay. Um, and the other one just takes uh, clay bricks. So these take less clay. Or actually, no, I guess it's the same amount. It's the difference of whether you, you cook it as a, as a clay block or as a clay ball. Um, Reinforced blast brick. I don't know what that does for you. Okay. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about real quick before we call it an episode. Is, I'm not sure why I keep carrying the chicken stick around with me. I don't need it anymore. Uh, the compressed hammer and the ore smasher. These are pretty slick. Like the compressed hammer, I, I'm pretty sure I showed. Um, you make the compressed cobble and you bash it with the uh, with the compressed hammer and, and that breaks it down. And, and basically it saves you a little bit of time when you're uh, processing your ores. But, um, okay, let's grab some iron. And I don't have a lot of powdered iron. And... I don't have any crushed iron. But here's what this does for you. So you you take your ore hammer and what it does is it pulls ore out of your inventory. Um, like whatever ore type you have, like broken ore, it combines the four broken ore for you and places it. So it took all of that broken ore I only had three left, so it left those. Um, and then you can you can break it with this, and it's actually pretty fast. 
So it does improve your ore processing a little bit until you get to the point of having machines to do it. Okay. And then once you do that, then you can, it'll do the next one. And I did test this with multiple ore types. It'll do that too. Okay, that's all of those. Um, now this does take um, a diamond. Here, let's show how to make this real quick. Or smasher, I'm sorry. Okay, it does take one diamond, which is, it's a little bit expensive, but it's, it's not ridiculous and then crafting tables and sticks. So it's not too bad. It has pretty good durability, so it lasts a fairly long time too. Um, I don't think it's repairable, but that's fine. Now if, um, and actually I'll just show you after I get all this. Okay, so if I go one more time, it'll it'll turn it into the um, the iron ore dust, and then you can break it with a hammer too. But that uses up durability, so I'm not really doing that. It's not that hard to do this last step, and there may be some auto crafting technology somewhere in the game. Um, if nothing else, there are crafty crates when I eventually get to Batania. There we go. So that's what I wanted to show today. Let me put this stuff back. Alrighty. So I think this has been a pretty productive episode. Uh, a lot of cool things happening. The agricraft, the obsidian production, the uh, X compressium stuff. Um, there is one one last thing. There there is one other, and you know what? I think I got rid of it. Oh no, there it is. There there is this compressed crook, and I don't know what this is for. You basically take four crooks, and you combine them in a crook pattern. Compressed crook, okay? So you take four crooks and combine them like that, you get this thing. Um, I'm not really sure what this is for. It may just be a crook that has better durability. Um, maybe it's a little faster than a normal crook, I don't know. But it just kind of seems to do the same thing and I, I would have thought there'd be, you know, some kind of interesting little twist on this, but there isn't. So may maybe it's just, just a faster crook with more durability. So um, I hope you liked the episode. If you did, please leave a like on it. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be awesome if you'd subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave them on YouTube and I'll answer your questions or um, try whatever your suggestions are when I get a chance. Thank you for watching. This is Arturio Ramirez signing out.